Now, Dame Caroline, this morning you've talked about the ways in which ITV talked to Mr X um, about the situation ITV. Uh, and I've written down, you've, you've called it um, a review twice, I think, and an investigation once. I've never called it an investigation. I actually said to the I chair, heard you say that, but then you subsequently used the I word said, investigate. I might have said investigated, because I think what we do is that we did investigate, but I, I wouldn't call it an investigation, because that gives it a kind of formality and, and, and structure that, because of the rumours and because of the time period, it didn't have. Okay, I, I've spoken to someone who's who's friendly with uh, Mr. X, um, uh, who says that he felt that the uh, review, uh, the investigations that took place, um, made it quite difficult for him to talk, and he was under a, a lot of pressure not to talk. Um, he quotes one particular conversation with a manager, and um, the words used were. Is everything okay between you and Philip? Those were the words used. And he didn't, I'm told, feel that he could really answer that with any candor uh, because, well, for all the reasons that we understand. Um, he also, I'm told, feels that uh, he left the program um, and didn't want to. Now, I've heard a number of different people describe his move to Loose Women as a promotion that he applied for. Uh, can you confirm that, uh, of his own volition, he applied for this job and that his job there was a promotion? OK, can I... I'll just go back to some of the things you've just, um, dis you've just outlined. Um, difficult to talk was he was under pressure not to talk. So we'd need to understand from whom, because in every conversation he's had with the head of production, he has actually not only felt less pressure when talking to her, because she has been so supportive and helpful of him. Well, Philip Schofield didn't want him to reveal to anybody but that, but that, the relationship. But, but that's a very different issue. That's a very different matter saying Philip didn't want him, and I don't know, the, I don't know whether that's true or not. I don't know, because I, I, I don't have that information. But if Philip was putting him under pressure, ITV were not putting him under pressure uh, on anything. We were actually asking... Was he was coming to us for uh, counselling and for other things, and we were helping him to be able to talk freely to us without anybody else in the organisation right. even knowing about it. So I want to apply for a job at Loose Women. I come on to that, but I want to be very clear that it's Philip that was putting him under pressure and not ITV that was putting him under pressure because they're two quite separate things, and it's very important we stick to facts here. And uh, the fact of the Loose Women uh, issue is that he absolutely applied for that job and he got it and it was a promotion but if we just track back he actually applied for a job on this morning as a researcher and Kyla will give you the dates before he applied for Loose Women and he didn't get the job on this morning he went through a recruitment process he didn't get the job he then applied for a job on Loose Women with 29 other applicants in the process and he got the job and I think we have to remember we're talking about person X, it's very hard to know. He was an extremely capable, very confident young person. He really was, and he, was, he, he impressed people he came across. It, so he was ambitious. And, okay, I, you've, and, you've said that about his ambition before, and I take that and, point. Anyway, I'm just relaying sorry. to you that his friend has told me that he didn't actually want to, to leave, and uh, indeed that somebody was... Uh, somebody was removed from uh, Loose Women in there order no to give them the post. There is no evidence for us. We have looked at the process, we have looked at the procedure, we have looked at the line manager who interviewed him, and we have looked at the other applicants. So, right. I mean, We have looked into this in, in, in real detail uh, because we're aware of the, the allegations that there are out there. Um, and our HR teams have absolutely confirmed, as Carolyn has outlined, this was in 20... 19 to get my dates right 2019 that he applied for a transfer he was looking for a promotion my understanding it's not i mean kevin is much, obviously much closer to uh the world of production and, and runners but people don't become a runner to be a runner for life no of course you're a runner and you look for i, I understand a promotion that. I, this was a promotion production secretary is a promotion if you don't mind let's whiz on a wee bit because sure. we've a lot to get through my uh, 
I've spoken to a number of different people at, at the programme, uh, current and, and former employees. They say it was a bit of an open secret what was going on between him and Philip Schofield. People knew about it, you know, the, the showreel that the chair described obviously isn't a normal thing uh, to, to, to happen. Uh, we, we know that. I've worked in TV. Most rare for a runner to be afforded that kind of time and privileged access. Um, did, when, when he was hired, did anybody find out um, what his history was with Philip Schofield? Did he check when Philip Schofield first met him, which, as you know, was when he was very young? Did anybody discover that Philip Schofield had followed him on social media when he was very young? Did anybody look into that or notice that? Or has that all been a surprise to you? So why don't, why don't I take that? Um, no, no one looked into... No one looked into the detail at the time. As I say, this was an individual, one of 50 to 60 work placements um, on daytime um, when he, he came for one and a half weeks work experience, uh, noting that um, Philip Schofield was a family friend. There were no alarm bells. There was nothing to see in that. We will have many um, uh, similar uh, applications for work experience where, where someone lists family friend across ITV. So, no, no one looked back uh, into And we that. wouldn't do that, Mr Nicholson, for any uh, work experience person. We wouldn't look into background. We would either give them work experience or we wouldn't be able to give them work experience because we couldn't do it. And so, he was 19 and fully supervised through his time there. Do you know who's paying for his, his lawyer at the moment? Because press reports are that Philip Schofield's paying for the lawyer. My understanding is that Philip Schofield is paying for it. I think Philip mentioned that in the B BBC interview, but we don't get involved in that. My understanding is that that's not true. His, his lawyers are working uh, pro bono because they're concerned about some of the issues in the case. Um, but you've been in touch with him recently. Person X. Yes. Or Philip Schofield. No, Person X. Yes. Um, can I just check how many people approach senior management with concerns about presenters, editors, or the culture at this morning. Uh, can I turn to you, uh, Mr. Ligo, about this? What came to me directly with complaining about behaviour or something? Yeah. Um, I don't think any that I can recall, honestly. Well, that's funny, because I have a, a copy of uh, an email, um, and it says, I understand it, uh, it's from ITV, uh, referring to you. In our meeting the Monday the 4th of October 2021, uh, you referred uh, to your concerns about the conduct of Philip Schofield and another co uh, colleague working on this morning. Um, I'm not able to share all the details, uh, but I can find no evidence to suggest that uh, Kevin Ligo failed to take action on the allegations that you have raised with him. Um, it's not a question of him not being interested in the concerns. He is interested in the concerns, and he does take the allegations that you have raised seriously. So there's an example of somebody who did contact you. Can't tell you who it is without permission. OK, well... But this is an email from ITV. From someone at ITV to yeah. me. Somebody senior at ITV to the person who made the complaint. I know, someone from, your, your, from you, yes. someone for, Indeed. for you to the complainant. Yeah. Okay, well, I, we'll need to see that. I'll need to check that, sorry. OK, because um, that seems quite significant. Um, we've talked about non-disclosure agreements a, a number of times uh, today, and you've confirmed that Mr X has not been asked to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Yeah. Right. Though he was given a, a payoff, wasn't he? I wouldn't, I wouldn't characterise it as a payoff. His role was made redundant, um, and, and he... Was he staff? After lockdown. He was a, a fixed-term contractor, so staff. We treat them in exactly the same way he'd been on fixed-term contracts for throughout his time at is ITV. That, is that normal to give normal payoffs to folk who are non-staff? It's normal at ITV. It was an absolutely standard um, process. I've, I have spoken to our, our chief people officer who has confirmed that. Um, his um, uh, settlement agreement that he entered into was completely standard. There is a very clear carve out for whistleblowing speaking up, and the payment, I understand, was absolutely standard, formulaic. 
as we would have paid to anyone else at that level. It was level. a redundancy. It was a redundancy Because his role situation. was redundant post-COVID. OK. Um, yesterday, the BBC said to us that um, they were going to release people from non-disclosure agreements that they'd signed in the past, unless it was specifically to do with commercial confidentiality. Are ITV prepared to do the same? I think we have any. Well, to the extent, I mean, to the extent that there are uh, non-disclosure agreements that were entered into historically, I don't know what, where those would be or, or what period of time, um, then yes. I mean, we don't, we have no, at the moment, I would have no knowledge of an NDA other than for commercial matters. Um, so, so other than commercial matters, at the IT moment, I don't have any, no okay. I have no knowledge that we have signed NDAs. Mm. If, if we have anything historically that we don't know about, we will look into that, but we would have no reason, I think, to sign mm. NDAs. Were you saying something a bit more cautious than Ms Mullins? Because Ms Mullins a second ago said, yes, people would be released from those, and you're saying so that you'd look into it. Is it look into or release? No, really, both. I mean, we need to find out if there are any. Right, but I've, I've phrased my question carefully. We're not talking about commercial. Uh, uh, NDEs yeah. with commercial sensitivity, yeah. um, just NDEs that, for example, might refer to uh, payoffs for bullying or other matters like that. Well, can, can I say, we, let's be clear about this. We don't have any contracts uh, that would say that they couldn't speak up about bullying or harassment or sexual uh, harassment or anything like that. We, 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 that there is, Kyla already referred to this, there is yes. a carve out that is, is quite clear in, in any agreement, that a standard agreement that we would do. Good. And just to go back to, uh, to my previous question, Mr. Ligo, I'll ask for permission to send you uh, that, yes, yes. that email. But just for the record, you're saying that to the best of your recollection, you had no meetings with anybody where they talked about uh, bullying culture or inappropriate behaviour with regard to Philip Schofield? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty certain I would, re I would remember if they were talking about... Well, I would have thought so. Um, I'll just ask one final um, question. Can you confirm that daytime production staff at this morning referred to their audience in production meetings as Tower Block Tracys? As what? Sorry? Tower Block Tracys. I've never heard that phrase. I have no. never heard what? that. A number of people have told me that. I've never heard that. Seems I don't even truly dismissive. If an idea is regarded as too highbrow, well, um, I'm told people say, would that really appeal to the Tarbot Tracys? I, I agree. It's, never heard that. It's a horrible I, thing to I, say. I, 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 yeah. It's a horrible thing to say. It's, it's not what ITV would be looking at as a target audience, right? We, we wouldn't describe our target audience in that way, and I know that... I do know one thing, which is that the daytime team on every show really cares about the audience, so that surprises me.